everyone uh, welcome to our uh, today's uh, press conference uh, it's it's Wednesday you know um, for today we have uh, two members of young guns and two not so young pero patindi pa rin pumuputok pa rin ano uh, once young uh, po. Uh, po. so we have uh, anak kalusugan party list representative Rayti Reyes, no? Uh, he's an uh, IT engineer. And we have uh, Dabao Oriental 2nd District Representative Chino Miguel D. Almario, uh, a marketing manager. And uh, we have also um, South Cotabato 2nd District Representative uh, Peter B. Miguel. He is an ENT doctor and he holds... Uh, Pre-clinic uh, dito sa South Building. And then, uh, of course, uh, veterano, no? matagal natin nakakasama. Hindi mo nababanggitin kung anong Congress pa tayo nagsimula sa kanya. <laughs> Our former House Majority Leader and former Deputy Speaker, now a um, Deputy Majority Leader, Neptali Boyd Gonzalez II. Sir, salamat po sa pagpunta today. And uh, before we open to our usual uh, media questions, uh, we will let our guests, uh, our guests to deliver their uh, brief uh, opening remarks. Okay, sir. Any anybody? <laughs> I guess. So we'll go by age. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for taking the time to come to uh, today's press conference. And uh, again, uh, uh, my name is Chino Miguel D. Almario from the 2nd District of Davao Oriental. And uh, I'm very happy that this, is, uh, that this opportunity is, has been given to us no? um, here in the Congress uh, as what was instilled in us during our first uh, entry during 2002. Uh, we were told that transparency was one of the most important things that we uphold here in the House of Representatives, and we continue to do so uh, during this press conference today. So again, thank you, everyone, and uh, I hope to answer your questions along with also uh, my colleagues here. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. So uh, as mentioned, I'm uh, Congressman Ray Reyes po ng Anakalusugan Party List, and uh, our advocacy has been really for equitable health care. But us also in this party list, in this representation, we are ready to uh, also help in other uh, sectors where it is needed. And kami dito sa Congress, one of the things that we wanted to push, especially the 19th Congress, is if we look at the data, we want us, this Congress, to be a data-driven and a results-conscious Congress where we pass meaningful, timely, and effective legislation so in, if there are any questions with regards to uh, health care, maybe a little bit of an uh, economy, I am ready to uh, lend my thoughts and opinions in this. Thank you. Uh, the last time was, I was here was about eight years ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the reason why I entered uh, the room. Uh, entering that uh, door because at the time wala pa ito, no? wala pa ito. well uh, uh, it's good to be back uh, uh, in fact uh, yesterday after the matatapos na ang alang, committee of the whole I went uh, to the three makabayans ano? si Franz si Manuel saka si Arlene and thank them I shook them their hands at ipasalamat ako sa kanila Tataka sila, but ako nagpasalamat, sabi ko. Papasalamat ako dahil natutulog na ako dati, papahinga. Pinasikat niyo ako. <laughs> so, yesterday, for, uh, yesterday alone, na-interview na ako ng radyo, hindi mo na tatlong beses, hindi mo dati na-interview. Anyway, uh, ano lang naman, ako naman eh, uh, kilala naman ako na ibang mga, ano, ng, uh, mga house uh, reporters dito. Uh, I'm just doing my, uh, what, what is, I was tasked to do and to you know, to lead the the floor leader of the committee of the whole magandang umaga po sa muli ako po si Dr. Peter Miguel po na second district ng South Cotabato totoo po mayroon akong clinic sa taas South Wing libre po magpatingin 
Dahil po yun pong advocacy natin, yung healthcare. And uh, I'm happy that I'm given a chance. Uh, I, I previously work as a local chief executive. Ngayon po, nasa kongreso na. Buong buo na po ang magiging tulong natin from local papuntang national. So I hope we can, I can help uh, the healthcare system of our country to my legislations. Salamat po. Maraming salamat po. R.G. Cruz of ABS-7 for today's per, uh, first question. Good morning po, sir. Uh, my first question for Kong Boyet, and of course, uh, the other lawmakers can <coughs> chime in. May prona what is, ha, ha, paano makaka-apekto sa uh, trabaho ng Committee of the Whole yung pronouncement ni Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos this morning that um, pag, uh, ma, ang prefer expressing yung preference niya for the uh, plebiscite to be held with the 2025 elections. Ito yung exact quote niya. It really comes down to a practical thing. Mag-organize tayo kasi yung plebisito, parang election din yan. So mag election ka, tapos mag plebisito ka, it's very hard to have a plebisit before the election kasi mabubulilyaso yung preparation para sa halalan. Yun lang, if we have to take all of these things into account, I think we will come to a good solution. Uh, the words of the President. Uh, my, my, my sense lang, no? uh, ako, there, there's no problem with that. No? In fact, that's pra very practical and very economical, considering that uh, isasabay mo lang sa uh, election next year, at uh, considering that if we will go by the, ano, then, yung uh, Picos machine, whatever, lalagay ka lang naman ito ng portion na yes or no. Eh? So, Ma talaga yun. Wala, wala, wala talaga additional cost that uh, you can say. Now, uh, and besides, uh, kami naman in, in the House, uh, the, the time frame that we are trying to work on is that uh, we will be able to finish this on third reading before the Lenten break. Alam nyo naman yun eh, na, na i announced na yun. Now, of course, we will send, because uh, under our rules, we are, about, we, we are supposed to process this uh, in the nature of a bill. Uh, it, ano, process this in the, yan ano nga, process ha, hindi ito, a, it's not a legislative bill, it's just being processed as a bill, meaning it has to go through first, second, third reading. In my sense, papadala to sa, ano, sa, sa Senate. Now, uh, I was asked yesterday, ano ang ano, uh, after that, What's going to happen? Then my sense, ito lang, personal ko, if it is being processed as a bill, then like any other bill, ha had to wait for a Senate counterpart. Uh, and RBH uh, 6, tinay take up na nila, whether it's the Senate or not, uh, will be able to approve their uh, before the uh, break, uh, Lenten break. Th that's, another, uh, no, no. that's another story because ayaw naman namin pakialaman what will be the, the time, timeline of the Senate. Uh, ang ano lang, we, we have to, for that to work, uh, assuming, I'm just assuming, if, if both houses of Congress will be able to, ano, to approve yung, uh, by the required uh, votes provided for by the Constitution, then uh, the submission of the approved resolution must be in the hands of the Comelec not later, not ano, uh, to, para pumasok doon sa time frame ng May election next year, uh, around November or, Dece or December this year. Because ang sabi sa, sa Constitution, once the COMELEC received the approved uh, amend amendment, then it is mandated to schedule a plebiscite, not earlier than 60 days, nor later than 90 days. So you, you you can work on that. Uh, it, it may come, uh, assuming, for the sake of argument, that uh, we are able, uh, ano lang to, wishful thinking lang to, that we are able to approve the this by before the Lenten season. The matter of uh, both of houses of Congress, I, I'm referring to, the matter of submission for plebiscite to the Comelec. Yeah, just na lang to 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 ano, to 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 be within that period because the moment uh, we we uh, we ibigay mo yan sa kanila uh, beyond the the 90 days limit nila or 60 days then mapipilitan ng Comelec uh, as mandated by the constitution to have a plebiscite earlier 
than the, than the election next year. But if you're going to ask me, is it uh, legal, possible, na maisabay ito next year? Pwede. And economical at that. Uh, so long as magpo-fold dun sa pre the time frame provided for by the Constitution. I'm going to go to my uh, second question. Yesterday, si Congressman Colmenares, uh, or former Congressman Colmenares, um, expressed concern kasi yung pag nilagay yung unless otherwise provided by law, he's uh, warning na there will be too much power given to Congress and Congress will be uh, buffeted, sabi nga niya, by lobby money uh, pag nangyari yung ganon. Um, how would you address that concern? Uh, si Neri, kaibigan ko yan, nakasama ko sa kongreso yun matagal. We, we call each other brother. Ano? But with due respect to what he uh, stated yesterday, sa akin, ang tingin ko na dyan, pananakot lang yan. Eh. Pananakot that we will be exposed to, uh, if you give the power to, legislative power to the Congress to to change the proportion of ownership as provided for by the court, but masa subject daw kami sa ano sa sa mga alam mo na uh, mga maglalabi sa akin pananakot lang yan eh. the better question is do we really need do we really need to amend the provision ayun na ayun ang ayun ang mas mahalagang tanong eh uh, kailangan ba natin talagang palitan yung uh, uh, i i-free ng konti, yung mga economic provision by the, by the Constitution. And there are two modes of doing it. Uh, there are, presently, there is only one mode of changing the provisions of the Constitution. And that is to amend the Constitution. Eh, kita naman natin, ano? Ang hirap talaga mag-amend na Constitution. Attempts have been made for the past uh, several decades, three decades at that, na either CONCON, or tumawag ang house, CONCON, or constituent assembly. But for one reason or the other, it gets stuck in the Senate. Eh. Hindi, hindi, talaga, hindi talaga pumapalaot. Eh. Uh, ako, uh, my, 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 my submission is because there's a distrust. Eh. The distrust that if you constitute a constitutional convention, then those who were going to be elected, mga tao rin na mga politiko eh, na baka pwedeng, baka mapalitan ng ano, uh, when you constitute a constitutional con convention, ano na yan ah? Uh, uh, it's a free ano, uh, wala nang ano eh, wala limit yan ah. Uh, can change anything, can, can be a total revision, not only an amendment, it can change the form of government, it can shift from your, your, uh, bicameral to unicameral, walang, walang limit yan. Ay, yun ang ano, I, I think it's the uh, fear of uh, one of, baka yun ang fear, eh, na baka mawala, ang, mawala, maging regional sila, or mawala, dahil magiging parliamentary. In the same manner, ganun din, uh, bakit ayaw din mag-convene? As, ano, as a uh, jointly assembled because yun nga yung issue of voting joint, jointly or separately. There's no way that the Senate we, will agree na to vote separately. Ah, we, an, ano yan eh? <laughs> yung over lang namin yan eh. Parang sa basketball yan, naglaban ng NBA champion, pinalaban mo sa isang barangay na the team dito. Talagang tatambakan talaga yan. And we will, the, the House is capable of overrunning the numbers of the senators so much so, kung ipagsasamahin mo yung 24 nila, sa yung sa amin, easily that three-fourths vote will be able to be achieved. You know? So yun ayaw nila because ang takot din naman nila, Pagdating dito, gano'n na naman. Baka mapalitan na naman, maging unicameral, etc., etc. So, uh, uh, my, my submission is, if we will, marami na nagsasabi ng mga ano eh, ng mga economists, mga, mga ating mga ano, mga economic leader, uh, sa Congress, marami. Uh, in, in fact, for the first time, I've been a majority leader for nine years, more, more than nine years. Been the, this is my eighth term in Congress. 
hindi publicly hindi nagsasabi ang mga senador we are for the economic uh, amendment of the economic provision never hindi nagsasalita yan ngayon lang ngayon lang nagsasalita yan na we are so we are pala eh. we they are in favor of the economic provision the question na how do we do that eh, ay ayo nga ng ano eh ayo nga ng konkon ayo nga ng konas uh, so ito lang pamamaraan na to ang pwede talaga Para ito, in this way, the House resolution, limited, makikita, and effectively we have mimicked and mirrored the, what is pending before the, the, the Senate. So there is an assurance that we are only taking up these three, three that are also pending in the Senate. At walang mga political ano rito. And then we are voting separately. Dahil we will vote on it, and they will vote on it. Dahil, dahil uh, uh, kami nga, we are being treated as, ano, no? uh, we, we treat this as a, a manner of uh, processing a bill. The only difference kasi between the House and the Senate, kami meron kaming rule eh. Uh, it's found in our rule uh, how to amend the Constitution na uh, uh, sa Senate wala eh. Wala silang rule. In fact, balita ko, yung palang nang, nang inumpisahan nila na magkaroon sila ng rule how to process their uh, resolution. Pero ako naman, the mere fact that they have a committee on amendment headed now by Senator Robin uh, Constitutional Amendment headed by Senator Robin Padilla and the mere fact that they have reported out a committee report of the RB86 na tinitake up na nila is an indication that they know and realize that they have that constitutional power, that consent, constituent power. Hindi nga lang nila malaman paano nila ipraprocess. Hindi katulad kami. Klarado kami kung paano namin ipinaprocess. And uh, maybe to add, yung praise po na unless otherwise provided by law, sa tingin ko, perfect po yun, praise, in, in fact. Dahil uh, in the context of globalization, ay eh, kailangan natin ng Congress ay eh, mayroong leeway kahit pa paano, may legroom to make laws that are adaptable to changes, that are more competitive. Pag finish po natin ng proportion, dyan pa lang po, sa Article, pag let's say Article 12, pagpalagay natin, gawin natin uh, 5149 in favor of foreign, E eh, paano pala ko ang prevailing po pala sa buong uh, global uh, economy e eh, tumatakbong 60-40 in favor of foreign and direct investment investors? Matatalo tayo po sa competition. So pag may long, unless otherwise provided by law, we're giving the Congress a more exhaustive, uh, deliberative, detailed manner of uh, creating a law that would be suited for global competition. Hindi lang po opening ng <laughs> pinag-uusapan dito, yung opening ng ating uh, economic provisions. The next objective is how are we going to be palatable in the eyes of investors. So itong unless otherwise provided by law, walang masama po dyan. Basta dumaan lang po to sa plebisito. Dadaan sa proseso. Katulad na sinasabi, Congressman Gonzalez, dadaan sa Senado, dadaan sa three-fourths votes of the Senate, either voting separately or jointly, it doesn't matter. Basta nagkaisa ang Senado, committed na. Natutulungan nila yung, uh, through RB86, kami naman, committed na. Through RB87, tapos narinig na natin ating presidente na amendments na economic provisions. Narinig, narinig na rin po natin ang dating presidente uh, PRRD na kasalitaan nung nakarang araw na okay sa kanya ang charter change so long na economic provisions. So having have the, that premises, wala na kailangan buuin na natin ito. It will be a monumental development pag nagawa po natin itong RBH or I mean itong resolution approved by both houses and approved by the majority of the electorate of the entire country. Uh, additionally, no, may, meron kasi nagsasuggest eh. Bakit hindi nyo nalang ilagay yung gusto nyong proportional share. Kasi kung gusto nyo yung gawing from 60-40, uh, pwedeng, pwedeng 51-49, etc. etc. Uh, bakit kailangan unless otherwise authorized ba by law? Kasi the moment we do that, if later on, if later on, sabihin na naman natin, oy, hindi pala pwede yung 51-49. 
di ba? So, kailangan palang palitan na naman natin. Kailangan. Because, you know, ang, 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 ang law should be, ano eh, hindi pwede static yan. It's not constant eh. Kailangan yan, nag apply yan sa present conditions, sa present needs of the country. Kung halimbawa, o sige, sabihin natin, after 10 years na naman, ay hindi pala pwede kasi ayaw pa rin pumasok. Gusto nila at least 60 sila. So, Pagpapalit na naman natin yan, unless lalagyan natin yan, unless otherwise provided for well do, we will have to go to the same procedure of amending the Constitution. Kaya nga natin ginagawang ano to, kaya na nga natin ginagawang unless otherwise provided for by law, is from making it the, the procedure from a tedious process of amending the Constitution, ginagawa na lang natin sa pamamagitan ng both houses of Congress na, na magpapasa ng batas. Kaya yung sinasabing, sinasabing uh, eh, marami maglalabi dyan. Sa akin, pananakot lang yan. Eh. Eh, eh, ang, ang, better, ang better question, as I've said, eh, talaga ba kailangan natin to? Kung kailangan natin to, di gawin natin. Are there any other comments from uh, Kong Chino and Kong Ray? Uh, Actually, Kong Peter said it, uh, uh, my, my sentiments regarding this one. Um, the, the sentence otherwise provided by law provides, the, provides us, the Filipino people, a little bit of leeway in order to further maximize the investments that are coming into our country. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's one way to think about uh, that as, you uh, know, as, as what Kong uh, Natalie said. But at the same time, we can also look at the other side of the coin to see that if there are any other foreign direct investors that require specific, um, let's say, if they provide uh, specific services, products that we are also in, in dire need of to further improve the status, the, the conditions of our country, the learning, and everything in, in between, um, we can rely on, on the otherwise provided by law to further enhance, to further tailor fit the needs of the country. So, yeah, that would be all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, to echo um, what my uh, distinguished colleagues have said, it boils down to two things, yung provision na linagay doon. It's flexibility and adaptability. By having flexibility and adaptability, you already set yung framework ng bansa the Congress that comes after us to be able to adapt and to adjust depending on the needs of the times. And we couldn't waste this opportunity. Sayang, sayang naman yung pagkakataon na tayo na mismo nakakakita na to. And ito, maybe I could put a personal anecdote. I, about last week, we defended the bill on lowering the stock transaction tax dito. Bakit natin kailangan bawasan yung stock transaction tax? Back then, based on the data, we have the highest stock transaction tax in Southeast Asia. And because of that, sa ASEAN 6, we are the second to the smallest stock market exchange, despite being the oldest stock market exchange in ASEAN. Because of the, how the laws are so antiquated at ang tagal din naman ng proseso ng paggawa ng batas, it's so difficult for us, nahihirapan tayo na mag-adapt immediately. Ang ginawa ko noari ni Vietnam, sige, let's make it competitive yung stock transaction tax natin, ipares natin sa buong ASEAN. Gawin natin 0.1%. Singapore nga 0% stock transaction tax. And because of that, we have looked at it historically na pag binawasan mo or you tried to um, bawasan yung friction cost or um, gaanan yung friction cost for capital to come in, that was actually the indicator for global markets to say, ah, mas madali pa lang ilagay yung investment namin dito kasi wala masyadong mga nakaharang. So we had to adapt immediately and that's why we pushed for it. Um, we're asking the, and the president, the speaker actually is in full support of such kinds of uh, philosophy with regards to capital markets natin, na ipush natin yan para maging competitive din tayo. So we put it in that same light dito sa economic provisions. Na gawin na natin yung overarching framework so that 
we are flexible and adaptable in the future. Thank you. Uh, from uh, GMA DCWB, you're recognized, Isa Bendanyo Mali. Good morning po. To Congressman Gonzalez, kayo po bilang chairman ng Special Committee on the West Philippine Sea, kadinang umaga po kasi, na-interview si President Marcos Jr. before ang biyahe niya sa Australia. And he said, he described uh, worrisome yung pong recent developments sa West Philippine Sea, including po yung presence ng Chinese Navy at siya po yung interference ng, uh, sa electronic communication capabilities sa West Philippine Sea. Yung pong bang committee niyo may plan to investigate this? and any reaction na rin po. Thank you. Meron naman kami yung plano, no? Kaya lang, hindi naman tuwing magkakaroon. Kasi, you know, for the past uh, month or so, almost every every week, merong ano, eh, incursion, eh, whether yung ating mga uh, fishermen are being prevented, eto na naman, meron naman ang mga worship. But, uh, ano yan, nagihiring kami, but, 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 you have to realize also very limited din ang ano eh very ang limited din ang nagiging uh, result of our ano no, of, of our hearing we can receive we can receive ano lang briefing we cannot con uh, ako as chairman of the uh, west uh, special committee of west philippines i don't believe that we can even conduct an uh, a, an investigation in aid of legislation eh. kasi papano kung papano kung uh, who are you going to ano no to to subpoena to testify from the other side din naman pupunta yan dito uh, so ano we are in close contact with the uh, task force at palagi naman ang nasasabi sa amin uh, in the meantime uh, na nagkakaroon naman ng diplomatic protest because while while baka we some some might view wala naman nangyayari sa diplomatic protest na yan because in fact by this time siguro we have already made baka ang dami ng diplomatic protest and wala wala pa rin talaga action ano but but the but in the meantime that that's what we can do eh hindi naman hindi tayo pwedeng magpadala rin ng worship natin doon eh, etc dahil kasi at least the, 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 why do we keep? Why would the atong DFA continuously make diplomatic protests, even if viewed by some? Na wala naman ang yayari, ano? Because we have to show to the world that we are not relinquishing our claim. Because for us to be silent, na nabawa, may ginawang ganito, wala na, hindi na natin pinapansin. Eh di, uh, Yung, at, yung ating mga countries do, who are supportive of our cause will also lose ano na rin, interest. If we ourselves cannot, uh, are not showing any interest, then sino pa sila? So, uh, basically, kaya rin hindi kami masyado nag, uh, although we are in close contact with, with the Task Force of West Philippine Sea, because every time kami maghihiri ng ganyan, Ganun, ganun, ganun palagi ang magiging, uh, palaging ganun ang magiging resulta. Kahit na may mag advocate dyan na sabihin, di padala tayo ng mga, ano, mga military ship para talaga gusto na makipag-gera. Things that, uh, things that, well, our country is also trying to avoid. I may add to that because he is my chairman in the West Philippines. Magkasama po kami. And uh, I guess Kong, um, Kong Gonza uh, Gonzalez is actually too modest also to say that we have exhaustively deliberated on this measure. And iisa din naman, one of the things that we have discussed there, and it is conclusive, is that for us to have a sustainable presence to assert our rights in the West Philippine Sea, and it also always coming, it's always coming in, in our deliberation, and, and uh, Kong Gonzalez has uh, um, acknowledged it and uh, has made uh, the non comments then one of the things that we have also put forward is that we ha more than that asserting our claims we have our diplomatic protests in the in the scenario of uh, the world where um, countries actually the best way of communicating Jen is really an assertion of strength for us it's actually to build our minimum deterrence capability 
having a minimum deterrence capability in places of interest of the Philippines could assure us of asserting our sovereignty. Fortunately, and not a lot of people know this, is and that the president and the speaker was also pleasantly surprised, is that we actually in the Philippines have local um, capability to create or to produce the needed, the needed capability. I know it's very, it's so easy when you look at it in the press, palagint nitig na natin, it is always a show of size and strength. But given our archipelagic nature here, what is actually needed, numbers, agility, and adaptability to the changing scenarios there. And that is something that our local uh, manufacturers are able to do. Now that the, the president and actually the speaker was uh, um, made aware of these, and they're pleasantly surprised that we actually have that kind of capability to, to uh, to help in our West Philippine Sea advocacy is, that's why my discussion already on, uh, I think we had this Horizon 3 with the AFP, now they want to, uh, to do a rehorizon because they need to re reassess kung paano ang ating uh, plan of approach dito sa West Philippine Sea, now using also sustainably and locally produced um, military capable, ca militarily capable crafts. So uh, that's it for, uh, that's what I could add sa atinami ni Kong Gonzalez. Thank you. No more other reactions from our other guests? Uh, I just pray po na magkaroon talaga ng diplomatic talks. Siguro yun ang pinaka, with these incursions, to me it's bullying. Eh kailan siguro panahon na ng diplomasya. Diplomasya, pag-uusapan siguro with the Chinese government. Uh, short edition. Um, so I was watching also the news uh, regarding that one. And I think it was also mentioned, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, it was mentioned by the Coast Guard that even though there are j uh, signal jamming um, attempts, uh, there is still, they are still yet to verify uh, it, from where these um, attempts have come from. But at the same time, they've also signified that it does not pose a great hindrance to the uh, current operations, the maritime operations as well. So um, I think it is reassuring that our Coast Guard and all of the maritime activity that we have there are still continuing despite these uh, crippling um, technological attempts. Uh, at the same time as what Kong Peter said, uh, prayer uh, that, that uh, this gets resolved and also the consistent um, the consistent efforts of all of the branches of government and also our uh, um, armed forces and our men in uniform uh, are needed uh, for this to be resolved as peacefully as possible. Thank you, sir. Uh, Red Mendoza of uh, Manila Times. Hi, po. Good morning, po. Uh, ask ko lang po siguro in yung reaction po, Kong, 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 Kong Boyet specifically, and other congressmen can chime in. Sa sinabi po na, sa sinabi po ni former President Rodrigo Duterte last Sunday, na parang nagbago na yung isip niya sa charter change, na he will support it, pero as long as walang quote-unquote vested interest na ko'y kinabang sa pagbabago ng saligang batas, your take on it po, mga congressman. Thank you. Eh, hindi ko maintindi din kasi ano yung vested interest eh. Uh, uh, baka, eh, eh, dito, dito naman, nakikita naman lahat yung ano, no? Yung, uh, the, there are only three mandatory provisions that we're taking up, no? Uh, uh, hindi ko alam, saan, saan papasok rito yung vested interest, ano? And I'm sure we are taking, uh, we, we are taking this up in the, in the House of Representatives because, uh, of our ano, submission that there is a need to change the economic uh, provisions of the house to allow to allow co this uh, uh, the congress and future congresses na kung 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 ma-approve ito in the plebiscite uh, to be called for that purpose that the restriction the 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 freeing up of the economy in so far as the amended uh, provisions are concerned uh, should be Ano na, pwede na sa pamamagitan ng, ano, ng, 
ng uh, batas, ano? paggawa ng batas, hindi na sa pamamagitan ng pinak- mahirap na proseso ng pag-amyenda ng Constitution. Iyon lang naman ang ginagawa namin. Eh. Wala, wala na kami ibang ginagawa. Napakalaking bagay po ito, yung pronouncement ni former President Digong. Dahil po, kung ang isipin na, nakaraang araw, linggo, eh kontra pa po siya. This is a complete turnaround at it's a big uh, cue for us na nagsama na ang dalawang influential persons ng Pilipinas ngayon. Ang ating sitting president, P- PBBM, and former president saying cha-cha is good so long as we will amend the economic provisions. So ito maganda actually, ito yung the last piece of the puzzle na magsasabi sa both House and Senate na tuloy na tayo. Tuloy na, wala nang balakid to. Basta ekonomiya lang. And kami, dito sa Congress, we're true to our commitment for the economic provisions alone. Specific naman yung RBA 7 yun. Article 12, 14, 16. So wala wala tayong kakatakutan dyan. And wala naman tayong pangamba doon sa worry ni former president of a political, uh, ano yun? political gains na matatamasa natin dahil wala namang pinag-uusapang political sa ngayong proseso. Um, okay. Uh, with regards to pres- uh, former president's um, statement, uh, it is a breath of fresh air uh, to us lawmakers as it is a sign that Okay, uh, we now see eye to eye. Both presidents, uh, former president and our current president, BBM, um, see eye to eye. The legislation, uh, legislative body also sees eye to eye. Um, the, maybe, you know, uh, the thing is, when these proposed uh, constitutional amendments, or at least uh, in our case, when the Committee of, of the Whole has uh, pre- presented these changes, uh, the intention was never, it wasn't with vested interest in the first place. It was to really further improve the economical standpoint of the country. So for, for the former president to mention that he is for the econ chacha, it is, again, as I've mentioned, a breath of fresh air to us. And we continue to welcome these kinds of support to all of our influential leaders across the country. Echoing what every um, my colleagues have said, is uh, magandang balita po that uh, our former president is now open to uh, yung uh, proposed na mga economic provisions po natin dito sa charter change. I think uh, when when you look at it from before when this administration was formed, we were always, or the president has espoused a single word that encompasses how we want to move forward for a better Philippines, or which is unity. But we never really meant na ang unity is a unilateral, no take no prisoners approach. One direction only, we will not take any other dissenting opinion. Unity is a process of actually getting each and everybody's viewpoints and act having this respectful debate in a manner that is displayed to the public that we are finding all of these means for the betterment of our people. So we are very happy with uh, what the comment of our former president has made. And we actually, in Congress, we look forward to working with each and every stakeholder um, moving forward. Thank you. I I think the... Pagkakaintindi ko sa statement of the former president nang sinasabi niya walang vested interest, it refers to walang makikinabang sa members of Congress. Kung, kung, merong, kung, merong, kung merong other than economic provision na amendment, may mga political. I, iyon ang ano niya. I, iyon ang pagkakaintindi ko sa kanya. Baka ang suspicion niya, baka, baka merong term limit, uh, extension dyan, or whatever. Uh, Yun ang ano, yun, yun ang pagkakaintindi ko. That aspect, he is uh, opposing. Ngayon, kaya nga sabi ko, uh, you, you can examine uh, etong, etong ano to eh, uh, RBH7. Exa- ito na lang talaga ang nakalagay rito, no more, no less. 
kaya nga it's an assurance to the Senate na ito lang. Walang political ano rito, uh, walang political na amendment. It is assurance to the former president na wala. It's an assurance to everybody na wala. Ito lang talaga ang pinag-uusapan na rito. Walang other political uh, amendment na pinag-uusapan. Thank you, sirs. Uh, from uh, Manila Bulletin, Elson Casmorio for the next question. Uh, hello po. Good morning. I have questions on uh, two topics po. Uh, yung pong isa pa pong nangyayaring mahalaga sa Kongreso ngayon, uh, this morning we started uh, tackling po yung legislated wage, wage, uh, wage hike bills. Just want to get your thoughts po uh, from all of you. Uh, obviously, marami pong eyeballs on Congress because of this po. Ako pala to? Okay. Yung wage hike, I believe that uh, the initial proposal was uh, around 100 pesos. And my understanding is, uh, tama po ba sa Senado po yata na galing yung proposal of 100 peso wage hike? Sa amin po, it, and uh, based, on, uh, based on street uh, opinions, is most of the M MSMEs will be able to tolerate uh, a certain amount. Ang tingin po namin is we could do one better than the 100 pesos. We are looking at around 150 to 350 pesos. We'll, we have to test where the uh, balanced point is para dito sa wage hike po natin. Alam naman po natin that uh, tumataas yung mga presyo ng bilihin and uh, marami din naman tayong pagkagastos. And so as in Congress, actually, more than the wage hike and this is the beauty of having a Congress that encompasses all aspects in the lives of the Filipinos. We could do, we could do it better. Hindi lang wage hike yung titingnan po natin dito. Pati yung, kasi ang mahalaga po dat, natin, hindi kung gaano kalaki yung, na, yung sweldo, kung ga, kundi kung gaano kalaki yung naiipon natin pag natapos natin bayaran yung mga gastusin natin. So net take home pay ang ating... Uh, Tutugunan. And that take-home pay, ang ibang maraming aspeto yan eh. Kasama din kasi, presyo ng bilihin, presyo ng kuryente, transportation natin, cost ng pabahay. Lahat po yan, lahat po ng aspeto na yan, aming binabantayan din po sa Kongreso. And we are very, we're happy to, uh, to inform po the public, baka hindi pa po alam, is it is through the work of your Congress po last year na aming nailobby po sa PhilHealth na ituloy na yung konsulta para may konting aspeto tayo ng universal healthcare, parang libreng check-up na po. Nandito na po yan para sa lahat ng PhilHealth members. And uh, we are encouraging everybody na maging PhilHealth member kahit na walang contribution kasi may aspeto ng PhilHealth para sa mga indigents na pwede silang makakuha ng libreng pagamot. Yun yung pinaglabi din namin dito sa Kongreso. And then the other one po is... Um, Yung mga libreng dialysis po. Sa Congress din po galing yan. It's Congress that passed na taasan natin yung number of free dialysis sessions po. From I believe 90 plus to around 156. So hindi lang po na yung pagtaas ng sweldo ang ating uh, tutugunan. Yung paano natin mapababa o mapamaintain o, o pigilan ang pagtaas ng cost of uh, bilihin. So kasama na rin po dyan yung mga nagsasmuggle, taming tatang, uh, kaya nga, I think the Committee on Public Order held a meeting yesterday to hold people accountable po for those who are uh, doing mga smuggling and yung mga artificial uh, warehousing para po sa pag-artificial, uh, para uh, gumawa ng artificial increase in produce. Having this responsive and quick, uh, quick to quick to the results Congress, um, assures the public po na yung mga congressman po ninyo dito sa Kongreso, hindi lang isang aspeto ang aming kaya, hindi lang isang aspeto ang tutugon na namin. It's the whole dimension of what it means to live in a sustainable society. Wage hike, actually, of course, it's in order of the day. Yung tanong na lang po, ano yung uh, pagtataas ng sahod na hindi naman masisira ang ekonomiya natin. So, yun lang po, if we can make a better one, uh, we will do that. Uh, ako naman, uh, 
um, insofar as the legislated wage hike is, uh, in, uh, is concerned. Um, I, I don't want to sound as a party pooper, no? pero I would take refuge on the famous words of uh, the late Inday Badiday. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> The, the, the worst that can happen is to give too much hope on our workers uh, na hindi naman kakayanin. No? Ay, ano yan eh? Alam naman natin, we have to strike a balance between yung sumasumesweldo saka doon sa nagpapasweldo. Uh, it's not as easy at is, as it looks. O, o sige, legislated wage increase. Uh, pero yung makikita sana natin, pag-aralala natin mabuti, yung repercussion, while, while we can, sabihin na lang natin 100 para mas madaling computein. 100 uh, for a worker working for a 20-day shift in a, a, in a month, that's 2,000. That's 2,000. Ang uh, minimum wage ngayon sa Metro Manila is uh, 60, 630 uh, a day. O sabihin na lang natin mga... I, there are about 13,000 sila. Bigyan mo yan ng legislated wage increase. Magiging 15,000 yan. But, but there's a distortion. Ha? I'm telling you, there's a distortion. Kasi may mga empleyado yan na biya, who are, who are sal, ang salary nila is a little over than the, ano, the minimum wage. Yung iba, sumesweldo yan. Let us say, kung ang minimum wage, 14, yung iba, sumesweldo na 15. Iba sa mga na 17, et cetera, et cetera. Siyempre, depende yan sa ano. Eh. The moment you give yung, yung, yung wage hike, uh, wage salary uh, ng 2,000, yung 14 magiging 16. What's going to happen to the 15? Hindi na mapapayag yan ng pareho lang sila. So, kailangan yan. Difference din nila ng 2,000. So, yung 15 magiging 17. What's going to happen to the... Eh, eh, yun ang ibig ko sabihin. Eh. And then, the ability of the employer... Na, na, ano, na, 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 ano, na magpasweldo talaga ng ganong kalaki without, without na magtatanggal ang mga tao. O, magtat kasi y y that's the usual reaction of ng mga employers. O sige, uh, papasweldo tayo ng ganyang kalaki pero may mga wala ng trabaho because hindi namin kaya. So, so meaning on the part of the laborers na would like to have a wage increase, they should also be prepared na may mga kumpanya na hindi makakayanan. So, there should be a balance between the two. Kaya nga sabi ko, careful, careful, kasi the worst that can happen, mangyayari, baka, ayoko naman sabihin, baka magpapogi ng Senate sa kahouse. Eh. 100 kami, 300 kami. Uh, hindi, 100 kayo, 300 kami. Uh, hindi sabihin ng Senate, pagbalik to, hindi, hindi. 300 sila, 400 na tayo. Pataasa na lang ang mangyayari. Unmindful of the fact that baka at the end of the day, wala tayong maaprobahan dahil kasi <laughs> magiging prohib prohibitive na ang pag- Ayun lang. Ayun lang ang sense ko dyan. Sabi ko nga, I don't want to sound a, as a party pooper. I just take refuge doon sa sinabi na iday ba di iday na. Careful, careful. I'd also just like to add, um, there is as what kong... Uh, kong uh, Gonzalez mentioned there is a very delicate balance, no. And uh, if let's say, for example, uh, by the way, before I before I continue, I'd like to preface this also by saying that the Congress is not against the wage hike increase, no. Uh, if anything, we welcome that kind of initiative because, of course, uh, we we see that there is also a need uh, for our uh, for the Filipino people or especially those uh, low earners to get also additional pay. Or at least in the, in the case of what uh, what Kong Reyes said, uh, to be able to get uh, more uh, after all of the expenditures, the necessary expenditures. Um, but we have to also consider the reason why that this is also undergoing so much study is because it is uh, it affects so many things. Uh, when you say, for uh, on the simplest. Uh, aspect when you increase the wage then you would also have to contend with the number of positions available because it is not going to be cheap anymore to be to supply jobs available uh, available to many people uh, it becomes more expensive for the company then in return they also price their wares their products and services higher and it is going to create a another uh, domino effect to many other aspects and since 
there are all kinds of businesses, all kinds of industries. When you put that wage hike into motion, then it is also going to affect uh, the purchasing of the Filipino people as well. Many commodities, be it necessary or be it uh, something that we just spend for fun, will eventually also increase if we don't study this correctly. So um, again, the Congress, the House of Representatives is with the people on, on recognizing the need of an increased wage. Uh, it's just a question of how can, we, how can we balance it in a way that we also don't cause great ramifications against our economy. So, you know. Uh, for my second topic po, uh, about ano po, uh, uh, statements po last night ni former President Rodrigo, Rodrigo Duterte po. So, uh, for the former president said something about Pastor Apollo Kibuloy. He had like parang an advice slash warning uh, sa kanya. Uh, ang sabi po niya, well, obviously, obviously, obviously po we know na may sampina po yung House and Senate kay Pastor. Uh, Duterte said, get yourself arrested. This is a free country. If you, don't, if you do not want to go there, get arrested. Uh, just want to get your thoughts po. And how do you think this can help the Committee on ano, Legislative Franchises? Uh, I, I'm not a member of the committee. But looking at it, at least from uh, our pers my perspective personally, um, there is a process to everything. And uh, although we hear, and it is also greatly recognized that the, from the words of our former president to Pastor Kibuloy, there are things that we also have to consider in terms of at least how we go through the process. Now, it is, uh, we cannot deny that there is an ongoing subpoena, that there is an ongoing, uh, there are ideas being bounced off. Um, but the thing is, uh, you know, quite, quite frankly speaking, if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to fear. And we just really want to present also, uh, well, not we, but I guess in the nature of our jobs, when we issue subpoenas, when we try to call also uh, guests, uh, guest speakers, resource persons, we also want to hear from their side so that we can have a better understanding on how to move forward with the things that we are trying to achieve or we're trying to understand. So I guess, to put it simply, um, for this to, to be smooth sailing, there should be a transparent um, transparent uh, uh, submission of information, at least one that is uh, required by the Senate in this case, or in any matter. No. Uh, so uh, I, I would not say anything for or against the comment of, uh, of our former president. It's just a matter of transparency on both sides as well. Uh, is the president referring to uh, former president referring to the subpoena of the Senate in their case in their investigation? I would guess, boss, uh, it's the Senate. But since may subpoena rin po tayo, does does it like uh, help yeah. him? Well, uh, I I would uh, I would surmise don't to sa franchises na sabi mo no? uh, You know, a, a subpoena is just an invitation. No, parang ano yan, eh? It's akin to uh, magfile ka ng complaint sa fiscal. Uh, sa subpoena ka to give you an, uh, to give you an opportunity to answer uh, if na, re na receive ang subpoena at ayaw mo mag-answer hindi na nga walang karapatan ang fiscal na gumawa ng resolution binibigyan ka lang ng pagkakataon to to answer i think the same is true with our i cannot answer for the senate ano? if the legislative franchise ay uh, nag-issue ng subpoena sa kanya to appear uh, it's an invitation. Kung gusto niya mag-attend, mag-attend siya. To hear his side. Kung ayaw niya mag-attend, then the committee is not without authority to decide the, 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 the issue even without his testimony. I think the better question is, ano, you, do you think po na the former president can sway uh, Pastor Kibuloy to surface? Yeah. Uh, okay, Kibuloy? That should be... <laughs> the, the better answer sh should be made by Kibuloy. <laughs> Tama po yun. Uh, nasa kay Pastor po kung aharap siya o hindi. 
Pero siyempre, uh, alam naman po natin na uh, national figure na rin siya, daming nagaantay. Siguro kailan din sagutin ni Pastor. At uh, meron din karapatan talaga ang house ng pagsabpina. Ang maganda lang na dapat ilatag na yung sabpina po ay di, hindi kayong tulad ng pag-aaresto. Yan dyan po dapat maklaroan. Kasi baka malilito yung publiko. Na yung sabpina ba ay parang aresto kung hindi ka pupunta doon sa, sen ah, sa, sen ah, sa kongreso. Hindi doon na lang sa polisya. Parang ganun nangyayari. So, we would like to clarify that sabpina is just an invitation and it's not a tantamount to an arrest. Uh, thank you po. Last na po. Uh, again, uh, from another, from a uh, statement po ni Duterte po kagabi. Uh, he clarified po kasi na he didn't call the President Bongbong Marcos daw po na drug addict siya. Uh, sabi nga po niya, I never said drug addict, maybe taking a drug. And then he qualified na yun daw pong aspirin and antibiotic eh, drug naman po. Just want to get your thoughts kasi how do you think this can affect the ano, political weather in the country? Kasi he is still the father of the vice president. Uh, yun lang po. <laughs> Doctor ako, drug. <laughs> ako naman, ano lang naman yan. No, no comment, no comment. Uh, yun, uh, siguro, ano naman yan. Welcome pa rin yan, sa totoo lang. Eh, di... From a negative statement to a positive one, ako tingin ko welcome po yun. Yun lang mga masasabi ko. Mas maganda yung gano'n na, na klaro na hindi niya sinabi po yun. Thank you po. Thank you. Uh, may we hear the next question from Billy Vegas of Abante Politico. Sengit ko lang po, lalo po kay, uh, yung question ko po para kay Kong uh, Peter Miguel. Boss, na-mention na na kanina na meron kayong clinic. Nagkiklinic kayo. Uh, dito. So, I understand meron mga kong na nagpapatingin. Opo. Uh, tatanong ko lang po, uh, meron po ba nag, uh, nag uh, tanong na tungkol sa glutadrip? Ay! <laughs> o may nag-request po ba? Or, and your thoughts po dun sa ano? Uh, sa ganito po yan. I really a practicing doctor before I became a politician. Uh, at uh, naging advocacy ako po uh, before ako naging politiko or public servant to serve the community through free service. So, when I became a mayor, sa tabi po na aking table, mayroong clinic. When I became a vice mayor, sa tabi ko may clinic. That's why I, I made it a point na dito na ako sa Congress, ganun din. I do uh, IV drip na no, ako yun nasa practice, pero hindi ko ginagawa po dito. At uh, totoo po yun, I have a free clinic for everyone, not only for salons. So may congressman na po ako na titignan. Hindi ko lang sasabihin, syempre, uh, sa patient, uh, doctor uh, confidentiality, pero pwede rin pong tumingin anyone, no? uh, kahit publiko, kahit sa labas po. Ako po ay uh, isang ears, nose, throat, head and neck surgeon specialist. So mayroon akong gamit dyan. I can capably uh, check you up, especially on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. <laughs> So, yun po. Ang oras po, eh, doon lang paakyat after ng roll call, mga 5 to 6 po ng gabi. <laughs> Kung yung gl glutadrip, may nagtanong na ba? Tsaka your take po. Uh, kung wala pong may nagtatanong pero uh, actually uh, hindi ako magdi-drip po dyan. Uh, I'll just stick with my specialty then dahil po mas uh, ma ma magaling o oh, dalubhasa, ika nga. At may doktor din tayo sa house kung ibang concern po ang patitingnan natin. Mas gusto ko dun sa specialization ko na lang dahil ayaw kong pumunta yung ibang mga pasyente natin from the house mismo. Alam mo, thousands na empleyado dito plus thousands ng staff ng mga congressmen. Doon pala makakatulo ako sa aking field. Uh, isa pa po kay kung Chino naman. Kumusta po ang baha sa Davao? Uh, yes, okay. Um, so to just uh, give a quick recap. Um, on the third week of January, there was a shear line, then followed by a trough. And uh, both, uh, both calamities caused extensive damage to the entire province, as well as the uh, region in, in, in its entirety. And it was unprecedented, and at the same time, the province, I can speak for the province, no? uh, at least on my district alone, we have incurred more than 1.5 billion pesos in damages to infrastructure on the national infrastructures. We've also had, um, at least as of now, as of February 19, uh, there were a reported uh, 90,000 families uh, that were listed as affected. 
some directly, some indirectly, because uh, doon naman sa probinsya po namin, we have, uh, we have farmers as well that are in the mountains. And yung bumaha, all of their crops, all of their livestock, nawala din. Although sila mismo, hindi sila na-damage, pero indirectly affected. As of now, uh, we've had very many support, so, many, uh, so, so much support from the national government um, through a, a speaker's initiative of sending food assistance through DSWD's initiative as well, uh, through, the, uh, through SEC Rex Gachelian, which in fact, he, along with uh, Sec Rex, myself, and Kong Nelson Dying Hirang of the first district, went to the province uh, to go around uh, the areas. And he, it was then that he realized uh, how difficult it is. He initially wanted nga na magbailan kami, pero realistically speaking, kung nagbailan kami from Davao Airport to the province, what would normally take three hours of travel would take siguro mga eight hours to 12 hours just because of the difficulty of traversing through the inf uh, road infrastructure and due to the damages. Now, uh, so far, we are waiting on the calls. We are waiting on the um, decision and the feedback from DBM, OCD, and, uh, and also DPWH with regards to what are the available uh, funds that can be utilized for the repair and rehabilitation of br the bridges, uh, the national highway, and other structures inside the province. And in, specifically in my district, as, as I can say uh, with confidence. So that is what we were waiting for. But as of the assistance, the food and non-food items, we've had PAGCOR, we've had uh, some senators give to our constituents there, and we are very happy. Now, um, now it is currently still in recovery, and we are now moving forward to giving um, cash assistance to those that are also in need because uh, we can only live on food for so long. We also need at least a way to be able to compensate, to be able to purchase, to rebuild what we have lost during that calamity. So, so far, uh, we are hopeful that in our, in our province, we are grateful that we are slowly but surely recovering as well. So, hopefully, uh, we can get to 100% uh, capacity, 100% capability in, in as, soon, uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, Earl Tobias of uh, IBC 13. Good morning, good congressman. Earl Tobias, IBC 13 po. Um, Na-mention po natin kanina yung role ng COMELEC no, dito sa pagsasabay ng plebisito ng Econ Chacha sa 2025 elections. And kahapon po sa isang ambush interview, um, nilabas po ng chairman ng ating COMELEC no, na okay na okay po daw po sila sa kung sakaling pagsasabay ang, ang plebisito at ang Econ, ng Econ Chacha at ng uh, midterm election, lalo na daw kung ang purpose ay makatipid dahil estimated ay nasa 13 billion ang gagasasin kung sakasakali. Reaction nyo lang po about dito. I, uh, I think that this would still merit further study. Uh, we don't know, well, I mean, on a practicality sense, maganda naman kung uh, pwede natin maipagsabay. Uh, because practically speaking, it will, it, it does not cost uh, a lot, a lot compared to, you know, if you hold them separately. But considering that this uh, involves uh, the constitution we might also we will uh, look into uh, what are the possibilities that we can uh, explore because i think no uh, if ever everything is smooth sailing then i think that we are also amenable to uh, the suggestion of putting it into one but for now uh, we cannot say with confidence yet as we need to look into um, all the avenues, uh, all the possibilities, and what the law provides that we can do or cannot do. Yeah. To add to that, I get the I get the sentiments po ng Comelec at uh, sayang din naman po kasi yung uh, logistical costs para gawin po na separate yung plebiscito or uh, ipagsama yung plebiscito sa kayong midterm elections. But katulad po ng nasabi ni Congressman Chino Almario, may mga legalities din po tayo yung dapat pag-aralan. And studying the legalities is a, basically a respect of what we have in our law and due process. So, hindi kailangang madaliin ngayon. 
may panahon pa naman tayo para pag-aralan to. Titignan natin yung mga president cases kung saan pinagsabay ang plebisito. Meron na po bang mga bagong ruling na nagsasabing hindi na pwedeng ipagsabay ang plebisito sa election. And then from there, we could make an informed decision para po naman um, mas, ma, maging confident yung public that we have exhausted all legal and practical uh, avenues para po magawa ang uh, plebisito in midterm elections. Uh, uh, it, it will depend also on uh, how COMELEC, assuming na isasama sa election, how COMELEC will include yung the, the, the yes or no vote in the ballot. No? Magdidepend din yan. Why am I saying this? Kasi dati kami, pag nagpa-file kami ng certificate of candidacy around pag May, uh, March, eh, March of uh, before May. Why? Because sinusulat. Eh. Ngayon, for the past uh, ilang election na because of the, ano na, uh, uh, big picos pa siya na ang ginagawa, no? We are mandated to file our certificate of candidacy ng, ng October. October. And then, meron pang ano yan. May, meron pang deadline yan for substitution. Why? Because, uh, kailan sila nag-preprint? Eh? Di ba? Kailan sila nag-preprint ng, ng, uh, ng ballot? Uh, so, mai-include lang nila yung, yung portion ng yes or no doon sa balot na uh, pag-aanohan ng PICOS machine, kung by that time na mag-preprint na sila, okay na. Di ba? The moment na hindi pa kami okay, di ba? Uh, at sineperate nila yan, then that will pose another problem. Kasi how, how, how uh, assuming isabay din nila, but because of time, hindi na pwedeng maisama doon sa ano, doon sa balota. So, mag-recreate sila ng panibagong paper for that. So how do you count that? You know what I, what I mean? Yung, yung botohan, picos, isang pindot, alam mo na, ito magiging manual to. Magiging manual. Unless, unless kung pa, ma, magagawa na naman ng paraan sa picos, whatever, kung tawag ba itong picos, I do not know. Pa, ganun din ang... It will depend eh, kung, kung papanong sistema o procedure ang gagawin ng COMELEC. Yan po, pag-aaralan po talaga dahil uh, una, nakarinig din ako na mayroong ruling ng Supreme Court na hindi pwede pagsabay sa eleksyon. So, kaya pag-aaralan, kaya kung totoo ito, kung totoo hindi pwede pagsabay sa eleksyon, eh di talaga ang gagastos tayo. Pero kung gagastos tayo, what is 13 billion if we're going to see an influx of uh, foreign investment to the tune of billions of dollars? Kung bibilangin natin, 12, 13 billion uh, sa pesos is just 0.25 billion dollars. So, kung tinam sa konteksto ng malakihan, malit po yung gagasusin for the sake of a uh, monumental development na sinasabi nga. So, yun po ang take ko. Kung hindi po pwedeng sabay, so be it, gawin natin ng hiwalay. Uh, salamat lang ako, no? uh, Ryan. Uh, thank you for the invitation, ladies and gentlemen. I have to, I have mauna na ako, sabang kasama ko mauna. Alam niyo naman, uh, alauna ang ano at uh, magpapamake up ako. <laughs> thank you, uh, DML uh, Boyd Gonzalez for joining us today. Salamat, sir. Uh, for the last two, uh, do you have a follow-up? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yep. Last na lang po from my end, no? Um, the focal point of these discussions that we're having for the last weeks or the last months, of course, is the, the opening of the economy of the Philippines. And kanina nasabi natin kung gaano ka-critical yung phrase na unless otherwise provided by law. For, for a simple Filipino public, uh, tama po ba yung pagkakaintindi ko na putting this phrase sa panukalang batas natin sa Econ Chacha, una, we signal to the foreign investors na open ang Pilipinas at ang Congress ng Pilipinas na malleable tayo with whatever they need just for us, just for them to choose us na isa sa mga paglagyan nila ng capital nila. And also, is this also an assurance for the local um, business naman natin na if ever na yung proportions na mapili natin ay hindi nasi-safeguard yung kapakanan ng mga local businesses natin dito, ay mababago din ng Congress at magagawa nito ng paraan. Thanks po. Maybe I could give my thoughts on this because we seem to be throwing several adjectives. 
You mentioned malleable. I would like to think of it as more adaptable. Ibig sabihin po nun is, kasi when you put it malleable, you are putting it in a context that it is the will of somebody outside already what we can do. But what we mean by adaptable is because the power and the mandate still remains with the Filipino people. And dun po natin ilagay on what this uh, pro provisions or revisions in Congress is. And if, if I may add also with regards to amendments and the Constitution, you know, we could put it that we a uh, constitution is an evolving document, something that should always be attuned to what is fitting for the times, not only for the country, but also how the country is going to interact with other nations around it. So we have to, we have to put it in that context that our, um, when we discuss this, it is always being adaptive, it's being evolutionary. As a matter of fact, well, that's why when you look at the American Constitution, they have several amendments. And uh, I know that we, our Constitution is about 1987, maybe close to 35 years. Maybe. But they have done such amendments already as needed because of how there is a respectable discourse within society to revise what is needed for that changing times. In lamang po. I'd like to uh, talk about um, Tama po yun. The phrase, unless otherwise provided by law, it's giving us, giving the foreign investors a firm signal that we are open. On the same way, tama po rin yun. Maprotectan po yung lokal. Through a dated, deliberate discussion, research probably, kung ano mas maganda. Kasi mamadiliin na, mamadili natin at fix natin doon mismo sa article no, na hindi na siya magiging flexible, especially in safeguarding our locals. So totoo po yun, tama po yung uh, assumption that uh, the unless uh, otherwise provided by law is a very good safeguard as well as a welcome uh, development from the foreign uh, market. To add a little bit to what uh, Kong Ray said, um, when we talk about you know, on the question of at least how, how malleable does it make uh, the uh, does it make our economy if assuming that it gets approved, um, we, I'd also like to beg uh, the uh, I'd like to introduce maybe another school of thought. Na instead of thinking of it as if we are just inviting investors, we need the investors, but we have to tailor it to our interest as a nation. It, the, our economy does not, um, we don't depend on the outside for everything that we do. In fact, we are robust uh, as a nation. But the reason why we're opening these uh, provisions, these amendments, uh, pro, uh, is to further enhance what we need. No. So, if let's say, for example, uh, an investor comes in, because of the otherwise, uh, unless otherwise uh, provided by law, we can stretch it to a degree that would best benefit our nation and our people and, it, and its economy. So that's why that's there. Uh, so let's just, uh, again, this is for the safeguard of us, the Philippines and everyone inside. So as what Kong Peter Miguel also said earlier, um, this has, uh, you know, the intention of this one, of this particular clause, is, uh, this particular uh, sentence, was just to protect the Filipino and to tailor fit it to our needs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last two questions from Mela and Marian. Uh, go ahead, Mela, from Channel 4. Hi, um, good morning po mga kong, or good afternoon na. Uh, about lang po sa pagpunta ni uh, President Marcos sa uh, Australia, ngayong biyahe siya doon at uh, inaasahan nating may makakaharap siya muling mga business leader, gaano kaya kahalaga na umuusad na yung mga hakbang para sa economic charter change? Sa tingin niyo po, plus points kaya na na umuusad na yung uh, economic cha-cha sa Congress para maka-attract ng mas maraming foreign direct investments. At uh, what more kung ito ay tuluyan ng maipasa dito nga sa dalawang kapulungan ng Kongreso? Okay. 
I believe hindi lang din si President Marcos pumunta, pati si Speaker yata is sumama. There is a reason for that. It's because, you know, we the President gets so much flack dahil sa pag-travel, yung mga travel niya na kaya siyang pumasok pa lang, ang dami ng travel. But you have to understand this. Because of, the, dahil dumating na yung Presidente natin, siya yung may bagong administration, gusto niyang ipakita sa mundo that we are shifting the paradigm po dito sa Pilipinas that we are not only Philip we may be Filipino centric in our domestic concerns and to uh, um, assert our rights yet at the same time we are able to work best when we are the ones actually coming over there to tell people hey, the Philippines bagong Pilipinas na po ito we are able to um, bring you the needs that you want for your uh, investors. And also, you have to understand, our president po is practically the chief salesman of the country. He is the face of the country that when he goes there, he has to lend credibility to his word. Case in point din naman po, uh, I just was looking at this, and ano ba ang nadudulot ng pagpunta sa mga uh, iba't ibang bansa, particularly sa ASEAN? From November 2022, I think that is when uh, kahit pa pa nakapapasok pa lang natin sa administration na to, and to November 2023, so we have a one-year time period. We have already registered an increase of 28.7% in foreign direct investments. So hindi lang travel-travel ito. There is actually a tangible result already into the economy because he is telling every country that he comes in that the Philippines is actually ready to work together with the rest of the world. So this is, and the speaker is there to show that the internal mechanisms, the institutional changes are actually being addressed. And if you will look at the performance of our Congress right now, this is probably one of the best performing Congresses in uh, recent times where any mga LEDAC priority bills natin ay ating na, naipasa na sa Senado. A lot of it actually have been already signed into law so it's a two-pronged approach or multidimensional approach that I mentioned. Now, he he may he may be the face, but somebody else has to back him up. That he is na hindi lang puro salita ito pinapakita den yung resulta dito sa ating kongreso. Yun lamang po. Um, <clears throat> napakaganda po ito actually itong signal na pagpunta niya sa Australia, having uh, bringing the Philippines as a product. No, uh, imagine nyo na po, di ba nakaraan mayroon sinasabing beware of the Philippines? No, nagkaroon ng piyat ko, whatever issues long before. So tingin ko, pag mayroong talks ngayon, daladala ni Presidente about cha-cha, with the formal proceedings happening now in both Congress, the House and the Senate, e eh, dito pa lang tingin ko, yung mga businessmen around the world, nakaumang na. Kumbaga, ready na. Let's go to the Philippines. Naghahanda na. And lalo na in the event na pumasa ito, eh siguradong magpupuntahan lahat dito sa so, tingin ko. Because our market is so big. Itong pa lang, with the 100 million population and with the capability ng Pilipino, matatalino tayo, magagaling tayo magtrabaho, marunong, marunong tayo ng English, yung labor natin, hindi ganun mga taas. So we can expect uh, the, the deluge of foreign investors for their own global market. No, tayo magiging hub probably. That's what we're praying. That's what we think the need so that we can feel naramdam natin yung bagong Pilipinas. So itong pag-iikot uh, natin presidente, ako, I surmise, sinasabi niya, oh, ito na yung sinasabi ko noon. Nababaguhin natin at nagre-respond din na ang ating kongreso. So I see this very positively na in the end, uh, excited tayo. Ang tanong na lang, handa ba tayo? Nakaredy ba yung aning mga economic zones? So dapat habang pinag-uusapan ngayon ito, nire-ready na rin natin yung ating bayan no, na i-receive to immediately because ang takbo dito, ang usapan dito, gaano tayo kabilis magre-responde? Gaano tayo? Kasi competition ito eh. Kahit gaano ka-open tayo kung hindi tayo ready, hindi tayo, mabagal tayo gumala, mabagal ang proseso. Wala pa rin, sayang pa rin. So in the end, it's multifactorial. The efforts of the President, the efforts of the Congress, and of course, the counterpart of our businessmen also. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge Marian Enriquez uh, of Channel 5 for today's last question.
Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, po. Um, CPBBM po in an ambush earlier today said that pinag-aaralan pa rin po yung 5% premium, premium increase rate ng PhilHealth. <clears throat> it's like a cost-benefit analysis daw po. He said that if we can justify the increase, then we'll do it. If not, then we don't. So ano po ba yung stand nyo on this? Like, kailangan po ba, tingin nyo po ba dapat isuspend yung 5% or mag-retain na tayo sa 4%? Okay, um, because uh, Honorable Miguel is also uh, my co-vice chair on the Committee on Health. And the way we look at it is, the reason why pinag-aaralan pa rin ng Presidente to is ang daming, ang daming magagalaw pagka ginawa yung increase in PhilHealth premium. Pag in-increase pa yung premium, will there be a commensurate increase sa benepisyo. And ang daming, ang, ang dami pang uh, mga circulars from before dahil ang tagal na since we wanted to increase the coverage of PhilHealth. Um, to give context, yung uh, pamaraan natin ng pooled health insurance dito is we are the oldest in Southeast Asia. Yet as what has come about, is we are now one of the lowest in coverage for yung pooled healthcare services natin for the amount of premium na binibigay. And that's why hindi basta-basta kailangan taasan yan kung hindi nat natutugma yung increase sa coverage. And kami naman po sa Committee on Health and even during the Committee on uh, Operations, nung tinignan namin yung uh, balance sheet ng PhilHealth and yung mga... Um, previous circulars nila, oh, sabihin natin, ungkatan ng past na talaga ang nangyari, is we have found out na may mga surplus pa rin si PhilHealth. Surplus actuarial funds. Na it is, what they already have is already beyond the mandate. And then lumalabas pa na tumaas pa yung mga bonus nila. Pinag-aaralan na tuloy namin na hindi kaya nakatay up yung mga bonus ng mga PhilHealth directors sa pagtaas ng actuarial funds nila. So, kailangan naming, um, kailangan naming ungkatin ulit ang past <laughs> para makita kung uh, saan ba nag, uh, what was the root cause of this. And I believe what the President also is trying to imply is to the Congress, exercise our oversight powers on PhilHealth so that we could better utilize the actuarial funds to increase the coverage of our uh, citizens. Yun lang po. Uh, sa totoo lang po, last February 14, eh, nagbigay na po ng increase package benefit ang PhilHealth without increasing the premium. So, let's leave it at that for the meantime. Habang bago ito, na malaki ang package, ibig sabihin malaki ang lumalabas sa PhilHealth without increasing the premium. So mas maganda yan. But increasing again the, the benefit package uh, across the membership, all membership across all uh, disease entity, pag-aaralin nito talaga baka biglang mabangkrap din ang, uh, na ang PhilHealth. O, o kung increase naman natin yung premium, pag-aaralan din baka mabigat na rin sa ating uh, consumidores or to our patients or to all uh, Uh, PhilHealth uh, beneficiaries. So, pag-aaralin din po talaga. But for now, let's enjoy the new package benefits that will redound to a lower out-of-the-pocket expense for the patient and also an increased pay to the doctors. So, mahapi ng kaunti. Bababa kahit pa paano ang gastos ng bawat pasyente sa hospitalization. Thank you. Uh, we invite our guests uh, to share their uh, brief uh, closing remarks. Palagi na lang yung guest first. No, sige. Uh, okay, so the it, it, it brings me great joy to be able to express ourselves and to also enlighten uh, the questions that were brought forth uh, today. And in the past, uh, you know, few weeks na rin that there have been press releases because it brings about uh, transparency, as what we've mentioned earlier. Transparency from our side and for the, for the world, for our Filipino people to see. And we welcome uh, any and all kinds of questions that we may be able to bring into light. Now, in closing, I would just like to also add 
uh, I may be a little bit selfish, but I wish I would just like to add that um, in our job here in the House of Representatives, we see and we hear about so many uh, pieces of legislation, so many opportunities that we would like to leverage for the benefit of our people. And some of those were ingrained in, in the priority legislative measures that were sent forth by President Bongbong Marcos, especially during SONA. And one of which I would just like to mention especially would be uh, House Bill uh, 7327, which is the EGOV e Act, uh, or bill for that matter, because this was one bill that highlighted the potentials of the potential of uh, technology to further increase the effectivity and the efficacy and the efficiency of our government services straight to the people. And uh, this one in particular involves all of the national agencies. And as the technical working chairman of that time, it took us so many hours, almost 200 working hours, just to, uh, to make that bill. But at the same time, it holds great uh, potential to give uh, to further increase the efficiency of how the government sends its services to the people and um, so far um, it has been a comment uh, by many that uh, you know there there is a need for the Congress and the Senate to pass uh, their versions in order to swiftly enact uh, the priority legislations of our president. And in this case, uh, in, in, in this light, I'd like to also call on the Senate uh, and our friends there that uh, it, it would really help a lot if we pass the priority legislations um, so that we can also see the fruits of, of what the president has envisioned. As what uh, Kong Ray earlier mentioned, he is our, he is our chief salesman. So for us to be able, for that, um, for his, um, I would say, goal, for his intentions to be realized, both houses have to work hand in hand to pave the way and to make it easier for our president to bring in investments to our country. So this, just, this might not just be about investments, this can also be for other aspects of government as well, be it through the economy, be it through our defense, be it through anything that can affect us in our day-to-day -day lives. So in closing, I'd like to thank everyone for the questions. Uh, thank you so much as well for helping us bring into light and helping us uh, further explain our side of, of what are the things that may not be super clear yet, but I, I hope that we were able to answer all of, our, of, all of your questions today. Thank you. So again, sa amin naman po ay uh, maraming salamat po na binigyan niyo po kami ng pagkakataon upang uh, may palawanag mabigay namin yung aming uh, pananaw sa mga uh, working uh, daily issues po ngayon and yung mga other issues that we hold dear in Congress. Uh, katulad po na sabi ni uh, Congressman Chinan, Congressman Miguel, how uh, this Congress actually is a working Congress for you. Because ang daming aspeto na kaya naming tugunan ng pansin. So, mabilis po naming, uh, mabilis po naming ma-address kaagad yung mga immediate legislation, oversight, uh, oversight functions, and even our duties po sa constituents po. So kami like uh, sina, um, Congressman Chino and Congressman uh, Peter are uh, from the districts. Uh, we come in naman po is a party list. And the way the Constitution has put the party list is because it's to lend a voice to uh, mis, uh, underrepresented sectors or even small advocacies. In our case po, it's healthcare. So we are able to provide this certain aspect and advocacy po nationwide din naman po sa nakalusugan party list. Uh, like, uh, wa like what we do sa mga um, fellow congressmen ko, they have district offices po. The same with nakalusugan din po. We do have assistance centers in several places uh, nationwide po. Uh, this is something that we hold dear. Then uh, we are very, very um, thankful that uh, we are given this opportunity po to uh, present uh, things that we are very passionate about here in Congress 
in the service of the Filipino people. Po. Thank you. Salamat po sa pa malaking pagkakataon na uh, pagpapaintindi sa ating kababayan ang mga nangyayari sa Kongreso, both uh, dito sa lower house, I mean sa House of Representatives at well as the Senate. <coughs> malaking bagay po na napapakinggan po yung aming uh, boses dito dahil uh, yung agam-agam sa mga kababayan natin sa probinsya, eh hindi biro. Dahil maraming uh, statements from uh, vloggers, from uh, all sides of uh, society, iba-iba. Pero dito manggagaling yung totoong intensyon ng ginagawa natin. So, let's buckle down to work. Thank you so much. Paabot nyo na lang po yung mensahe ng pagpapaliwanag sa ating mga kababayan. Salamat po. Again, thank you Congressman Chino, Congressman Ray, Congressman Peter for joining us today. Sa inyong lahat, marami pong salamat. Magandang tanghali.